Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hunanega High School. I'm Brian Brown, and today we'll be looking at section 17.3, but we're only going to cover the first at half of 17.3. So really what we're looking at is part one of our two-point series over titrations. And today what we're going to do is look at titrations in general and then specifically look at strong acid, strong base titrations. Now when you have a titration, it's basically a technique where you have a known concentration of one substance, either an acid or a base, and it's going to be slowly added to a solution of its opposite, and it'll go through a neutralization reaction where one is reacting with the other. So you always have a known substance that you're going to put in the burette. So one of the things you should understand for the AP test, and you've used these before both in pre-AP and in AP this year, is that your known substance is going to go inside the burette, and down here you're going to have a beaker containing your unknown concentration solution. And what you're going to be doing in the course of a titration is using the known quantity of our known substance in the burette to titrate against a known quantity of our unknown substance in the beaker or flask at the bottom. And it's really a technique to find that unknown substance's concentration. Now a pH meter or indicators are used to determine when the solution has reached what's called the equivalence point. The equivalence point is really the point at which the stoichiometric amount of acid, which is contributing H+, plus, is going to equal the stoichiometric amount of your OH minus. So at this particular point in time, your H plus concentration is going to equal your OH minus concentration. And that's what's known as your equivalence point. And because it's the point at which the stoichiometric are equivalent, sometimes this is known as the stoichiometric point. So equivalence point, stoichiometric point, talking about the same thing. Now don't confuse this with the end point. The end point of a titration is the point at which you stop the titration. And your end point is typically like in the titration that you see here. This is what your color is before. Four, when it undergoes a color change, that's when we stop the titration. That would be the end point of a titration. And if you've done things appropriately, you've picked a uh, indicator that will um, hit an end point at the equivalence point. So that's really your ideal situation here. So you need to target your indicator so it undergoes its change in color, the end point of the titration, when you're at the equivalence point or the stoichiometric point. Um, this is a movie about strong acid base titrations, which I recommend you watch. You'll probably be watching it briefly in class tomorrow. Now, when you have a titration of a strong base, first I want to point out some things about the curve that you see over here. This is known as a titration curve. On the y-axis we have pH values and on the x-axis we're going to have either the volume of our sodium hydroxide that we're adding, so volume of our known base, or it could be the volume of a known acid. Because remember you're titrating your known against your unknown. So what you're going to have here on this bottom axis is how much of your known that we're adding. So if we're titrating a known strong base against an unknown strong acid, and by unknown remember I mean unknown concentration of the strong acid, down here you're going to have your, your uh, base. If we're titrating an, a known acid against an unknown base, we would have the volume of the acid down here. And typically we're dealing with burette, so we're going to be using milliliters of volume. Now if you look at the curve itself, first thing you should understand is from the curve, at the very beginning, at time zero, volume zero, what is your pH? In this particular case, we know we're at a very low pH, down here around pH 1. Well, that tells me that I'm titrating against a strong acid. Strong acids are going to have a very low pH. Now, if my unknown was a base, this titration curve would be flipped. So this would be pH. Down here would be the milliliters of some strong acid, like HCl or something. And the titration curve would start very high and slowly tail down, goes through a massive swing, and then tail down again. So anytime you see a titration curve that basically has a steady increase, so basically it's steadily increasing until it gets very close to the equivalence point, goes crazy, goes through a huge change in pH, and then once again goes through a steady pH change at the end, you know it's a strong, strong situation. One of the things you really need to be able to do for the AP test, and we'll take a look more at this when we 
learn about weak acid versus base titrations is how those pH curves look a little bit different. So one of the things you should be able to recognize right away from the curve is where am I starting? So is my unknown an acid or a base? And based upon what you see and how it's changing, you should know whether this is a strong, strong situation or a strong, weak situation. Now, at the start of the titration, since we haven't added any of our strong base yet, so it's a titration of a strong acid with a strong base. We're adding our strong base, which is why volume of NaOH is on this axis here. At the beginning, we haven't added any yet. So really, initially, the concentration is going to be solely determined by the acid because we haven't done anything to neutralize it. So this is our initial acid phase. The pH is 100% determined by the concentration of our acid. So what you need to be able to do is at the different points in the course of the titration here, at the beginning, before you get to the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, and after you're past the equivalence point, you understand those four territories of this titration curve for a strong, strong. You need to know how to calculate your pH and your H plus OH minus concentrations. At the beginning here, it's the initial acid phase. So it's all about what is the concentration of my acid. Remember, if this were a titration of a strong base, a, with a strong acid, then we're going to start out with a very high pH, and the initial pH would solely be determined by the concentration of my strong base. So in this particular case, pH would be the negative log of the acid concentration right out of last chapter. So at the start, pH is determined by the concentration of the acid. Now, after you start to add base, remember your H plus with your acid is going to be reacting with your OH minus from the base in a neutralization reaction to create H2O. Now, notice I've only looked at the, the active species here, H plus and OH minus. Remember, the strong acid, its conjugate is going to be a um, weak, or I should say a negligible base. And from our strong base, its conjugate is going to be a negligible acid. So for all intents and purposes, those are just spectator ions. And really what we have here is H plus reacting with OH minus. The salt we get is basically going to be made up of spectator ions that have no relationship with either the reaction or the acid base character of the water solution. So really what we're looking at is, in this particular phase, I've got a bunch of H plus, and I'm slowly neutralizing it with OH minus. So for every OH minus particle I add, I'm taking away an H plus particle. So if you want to calculate your concentration in this particular phase, it's all about how does the moles of the H plus compare to the moles of the OH minus. And since we're before our equivalence point here, we're going to have more H plus than OH minus. And remember, we're dealing with concentration here. We have mixed the two things together. So don't forget on the bottom here, and this is an important thing to remember, we need the total volume. So what is the total volume? And that's going to be the combination of how the milliliters of the NaOH I've added from the abriette to my initial volume of my acid in the flask. So you can calculate H plus, and then once again, you just take the negative log of that H plus. So up until you get to the equivalence point, what you're really looking at is how much H plus do I have left? And what is the total volume? And remember, that total volume is changing over time. Now, in the third phase, we're at the equivalence point. Now, remember, in a strong acid base situation, what's happening at the equivalence point, our H plus equals our always minus, and we have a bunch of salt that we've created, but remember that salt is a spectator. It's the conjugate of a strong base and a strong acid, so it's negligible in terms of pH. So at this point, what we have is equal amounts of H plus and OH minus. We are always going to have at the equivalence point of a strong, strong, a pH of 7. So we have equal concentrations of our H plus and OH minus, and the only thing else we have here is our dissolved salt. And remember, though, that salt is made up of conjugates of two strong, so it's negligible in terms of acid-base behavior. So at the equivalence point, strong, strong, automatically always pH 7. Nice, easy calculation. Now, after we go past the equivalence point, what we're going to basically have is another increase in pH. Now, it's going to start out rapid. So just before and after the equivalence point, we undergo a very, very rapid change in pH. So once we get to about here to about there, notice our pH is changing much more quickly than it was before. And then at the end, it goes through a quick change, and then it changes much more slowly again. So in this range, right before and right after, so from here to here, that's really what you're looking at. Halfway in between those two, 
that's going to be our equivalence point. So at what volume have we perfectly neutralized? Well, that's going to be always a pH 7 in a strong, strong situation. So one of the common things you're going to do with these titration curves when you first see them is first you're going to process, is it a strong, strong, or a strong, weak situation, and which is strong and which is weak. And the second thing you're going to do is look at where that equivalence point is. Go down and go over. That's one of the core things you're going to end up doing with a pH curve. Now, when we get into strong weak, we're going to do a couple of other things with it as well. But fundamentally, you need to know that's the volume at which my OH minus and my H plus are equal to each other. You can take your molarity times your volume in liters, and you get the number of moles. And that has to equal the number of moles of your acid. So you can use that to determine what the pH of, or what the concentration of that acid is. Now, after the equivalence point, we're into phase four. As more base is added, the increase in pH again starts to level off, so it only slowly increases. And at this point, now we have to look at it from the other point of view. We have gone past H+, plus, so now H+, plus is going to be less than OH-, minus. so we've neutralized the H+, plus, and now we have excess base. So this is the excess base. And really what you're going to be doing here is finding out how much OH minus is remaining. Before, we were looking at how much H plus, before the equivalence point is remaining. Now we're looking at how much OH minus. And all you really have to do is establish moles of each and subtract, and once again, divide by the total volume. Do not forget, always divide by that total volume. So the moles cancel out, and you're going to have leftover moles of OH minus. Divide that by its total volume, and you've got your OH minus. Since remember... The OH minus is not going to give you pH. It's going to give you pOH. To get your pH, it would be 14 minus the negative log of the OH minus. So 14 minus pOH. Now, one thing to briefly talk about here before we try a problem is, what indicator do we use? If we're not using a pH meter to tell when we go through that massive change in pH, we're going to use a substance that changes color. Now, in this particular graph, you can see methyl red changes color in this pH range, and phenolphthalein changes in that range. Well, both of those are within that region of where my equivalence point is at when I go undergo that massive change in pH. So realistically, here, either one, phenolphthalein or methyl red, will give me a valid endpoint because both of them are changing color at around the equivalence point. So ideally, you want to choose an indicator that changes color at the equivalence point. In this particular case, both of them did. Them did. So in a strong acid-base reaction, strong acid-base titration, the pH changes rapidly from 4 to 10. So really, any indicator that changes color in that range is going to be fine. Now let's a, take a look at a strong, strong titration problem. Calculate the pH when the following quantities of 0.10 molar NaOH solution have been added to a 50.0 milliliter solution of 0.100 molar HCl. Now in this particular case, we know the concentration of both of our acid and our base. So this isn't a situation where we're using the titration to calculate our unknown concentration. What we're looking at here is what is the pH going to be at different points in this reaction. Now notice both of them are equal concentrations. So when I have equal volumes, you would be your, your equivalence point. They, that's when they would neutralize each other. So that would equal 50 milliliters. So if we're looking at 49 and 51, we're going to be just before and just after the equivalence point in those two situations. So this is an example of a strong, strong titration right before and right after we're at our equivalence point. Now, to establish which of the four titration regions you're in, you really need to compare your H plus and your OH minus. So at the beginning, you know where you're at. But sometime after that, you really have to look at, OK, at this particular point in time, how much H plus do I have and how much OH minus I have? So the most important thing to do is remember that relationship, one of the two major equations in chemistry. One of them would be the molarity equation. Molarity equals moles per liter. The reason why that's so important is because molarity times liters equals moles. So that's really what you're going to be using here. Here is my volume in liters, and here's my molarity. When I multiply, I know how many moles of H plus I have. So since I had 50 milliliters, that would be 0 0.0500 liters, and the concentration was 0 0.100 molar. At this particular point in time, and this is consistent throughout, so this is what I'm always going to have. 
this is how much H plus I have when I'm at 49 milliliters of my NaOH and when I'm at 51 milliliters of, of my NaOH, this is exactly how much H plus I'm going to have each time. So I don't need to redo this particular calculation. But what we need to look at next is how much OH minus do we have? So at 49 milliliters, it would be point, or 49.0, it would be 0 0.0490 liters times our concentration, which remember was also 0 0.100 molar for OH minus. So that's what the concentration of the OH minus is going to be. So at this particular point in time, I have this many moles of OH minus and this many moles of H plus. So you can clearly see here we have more H plus than OH minus. So when the two neutralize each other, I'm going to have extra H plus. So that means in this particular case, I'm going to be on the acidic side. Now, so if I'm adding my NaOH to my HCl, I'm going to be before my equivalence point in this particular situation. So now that I know how much H plus I have, it's just find out what that is is a concentration. I should say how many moles of H plus. Now that I know how much that I have left after my neutralization occurs, I divide that by my total volume. Remember, I had 49 and 50, so the total volume in liters would be 0 0.099. The most common mistake for somebody to make is they either use 49 or they use 50 here. Remember, it's the total volume. And also, the other mistake people make is they'll take the negative log of this. Remember, that's the number of moles. To get pH, we need H plus concentration. We need to know the molarity of it. So divide by the total volume and then take the negative log. So we're at 3.00 molar, so very acidic, when we have 49 milliliters of NaOH. Now we look at what's going to happen at 51. Now at 51, I have just a slightly different amount of OH minus than I had before. So that's not a big difference. But notice when I look at it in my table here, now I have a little bit of extra OH minus. Once again, when I divide that by my total volume, 49 plus 51 milliliters is going to be 0 0.101 liters. And now I've changed to a pH when I take the negative log of that concentration of 11.0. So in 2 milliliters of NaOH, I've undergone a massive swing from 3.00 pH to 11.00 pH. And that's basically how you do strong, strong titration problems. In strong, strong problems, you need to understand what am I starting with? acid or base situation. And you're always taking a look at how these two things compare. So what you're really doing is looking at the relationship between H plus and OH minus. So strong, strong, fairly simple math. And that ends our first section of notes over section 17.3.